Hi everyone and welcome to Women's Equality Day. My name is Sam Collins and I'm really grateful that you are here today joining me. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for your contributions and donations to this event which are going towards Women for Women's program in Afghanistan for women and girls. So yay, Women's Equality Day. Let us focus on it. It is a uh, pre predominantly a U.S. day uh, comm commemorating the vote, uh, the 19th Amendment for women to be able to vote in the U.S. Um, unfortunately, at that very time, though, although white women were allowed to vote, um, the votes for Black, Asian and Native American uh, women came much later, even decades later. Nevertheless, we are here today to celebrate, uh, first of all, the women's whose shoes we walk in, that so many women uh, fought for our rights that we have today for gender equality and are impacting gender equality, women's equality across the globe. And so we are here on a global nature today to celebrate uh, women's equality and to really engage in the vision for gender equality, the very dramatic issues that, that are happening and have been exacerbated due to the pandemic for women currently around the world and really to engage you uh, more if you are already engaged in this topic or if you're not to really for you to think about what you can do what can you do to be part of this so we will talk about the vision for gender equality why it's so critical why you and why now and i want to share some practical actions as well and i would love we would all love that at the end of today at this event today whether you're watching it here live here in august the 26th 2021 or you're watching the recording at some point in the future whatever year it is that you are involved in gender equality. And you can see that it's more than a women's issue. This is a global issue. This is a human rights challenge. It affects all of us in so many different ways. I wanna open your eyes to gender intersectionality, that when women have additional challenges, additional parts of themselves that are not always recognized, it can make an even bigger hill mountain to climb. If you're a female in the workplace and there are very few women in the senior levels of your organization, there are very few women that are working in, start, in the startups that you work in, there are very few women that are doing what you wanna do. If you ever feel like an outsider, if you feel different, if you are wondering what's the point and what is your purpose, then know that you are not alone. And there are many, many of us, in fact, in the entire globe in some different ways that feel the same thing. So being a woman is one aspect of this, being female and being a woman of color it's called a double bind so that you can experience both sexism and racism. What about being a woman and a woman of a certain age, sexism and ageism? What about being a woman and gay, sexism and homophobia? And so I can go on. And so it's very important for us to understand all of these different intersectionalities and to understand the challenge behind them but also to understand the beautiful tapestry behind them, that we are all intersectional, that we all have different parts of us, and that we understand that if we are a parent, if we are an educator, if you work in a corporation, if you have your own business, if you are not working right now, if you are a student, whoever you are, whatever your labels are, the roles that we allocate to ourselves in this world, that we are all truly intersectional. And the vision I wanna to present to you today is one of hope and one of optimism. And I know that that might be a difficult pill to swallow at this point with so many terrible things happening in the world. And at the same time, I strongly believe and feel <laughs> 
that we are in a transition time to something better. And for those that engage in this, those that engage in the change, those of you that say, why not me? Why can't I do something about this? Those of you that take small, collective, courageous actions every day and that your actions are loving and respectful and authentic and that your actions are integral, integral to your daily life. Now, I don't normally do speeches. I'm known as a coach and an author, a facilitator, a trainer, all sorts of different things. I'm known as difficult, I'm known as annoying, I'm known as irritating, I'm known as rebellious, and I'm known as soft, and I'm known as hard, I'm known as emotional. These are all parts of who I am. This day, I'm all these things, and I'm coming to you with my point of view. I'm coming to you with my vision. I'm coming to you with a call to action. As we are here today on Women's Equality Day, this is about the equal distribution of power and authority and rights for everybody. Gender is a spectrum of many, many different things and many, many different identities in people. Who of you doesn't want to have a more equal world? It's critical we want to have a more optimistic, a more authentic and more balanced world. If we start to really focus on that, on that vision, we become inspired. And when we become inspired, we are way more likely to take courageous actions and overcome our fears. Think about it. There's so much out there about overcoming your fears, move through the fears, feel the fear and do it anyway. Have you heard of these things? They work to a point, but when there is no compelling vision, no inspiration, we fall short. We go back to our bad habits. We go back to our cocoon. We go back to our depression. We go back to our mental health issues. We go back to all the things that we are battling with on a daily basis, be that your health, your finance, your relationships, your career, or whatever it is for you. But when we are inspired, when we are inspired, we find courage in a deeper, more grounded, more sustainable place. And my vision is that as we become more inspired, that would be my dog barking in the background, giving us some inspiration. As we become more inspired, we become more courageous. And as we become more courageous, we give permission to others to become more courageous too. And as others become more courageous around us, our families, team, if you work in a team, your business, if you work in a business, your community, your church, your school, or whatever it is, it's, it's collectively spreads. And when courage collectively spreads, it gives permission for others to rise too. Don't you feel more courageous when others are courageous around you and they give you permission and they help you to rise up too? We're all looking for role models. We're all looking for inspiration from others right now. And it's falling short. It's falling short with our government leaders. It's falling short with our business leaders. It's falling short with our parents. It's falling short with our siblings. It's falling short with our children. <laughs> We're looking everywhere outside. But you know where true courage comes from? Right inside you. If you were to really look inside and remember, because many of us, many of you have forgotten how absolutely fantastic you are, how resilient you are, how much you have been through, how much you are capable of, how much potential is still left for you, then amazing things will start to happen and your courage muscle will start to grow. Now, if we don't do this, if we don't start focusing on an inspirational vision for our world, for your world, if we don't do that, what's gonna happen? Because right now when you turn on the news, I don't know about you, but it's not particularly inspirational, of course. It's dramatic and it's scary. 
There's no one out there giving us any real inspiration. But when we start to fathom it ourselves, when we start to say, what would I like to do? How do I want to make a difference? And we start to feel better. We start to become more inspired. If we don't do this, I fear that the mental health crisis will exacerbate way more. I fear that there will be increasing amounts of health, physical health, mental health issues. I fear that so many people will not feel accepted in their lives. And I fear that division will increase to a chasm that cannot be crossed. So it's time for us to really engage. Did you know that the pandemic has had a dramatically terrible effect on women around the world, on everyone around the world, but will women particularly have suffered as a result? Women in the UK are issuing a cry for help that gender equality is going backwards to the 1970s or even further back than that. That in the US last year during 2020, four times as many women than men lost their jobs and increasingly so for women of color. What's going on? Women are getting the absolute brunt of this. The World Economic Forum that does a gender gap report every year said that women's equality is going to go back decades, decades as a result of the pandemic. That on the different measures that they have for gender equality around the world, we are doing well in women's and girls' education across the world. But economic participation, so women's participation in jobs and, and, and in businesses is terribly bad, that it will take, how many years, can you guess? How many years is the World Economic Forum saying it will take for women to gain economic parity around the world? 267.6. We won't be alive to see it, nor will our children, nor will our children's children. We have to do something about it. Political participation as well is, is just stagnating. But what happens when we start to see women who are participating and who are leading as, as managers and as leaders in our organizations and running our countries, we start to see great things happen. We start to see a more balanced approach have you heard of the triple bottom line, where there is a focus not purely on profits, but on people, planet and profits? Imagine that, that businesses were measuring themselves, not only on the money that they make, but on their impact on people. And it's not just lip service, and then their impact on the planet. Imagine if that was the law, that they had to do that. <laughs> It would make a fantastic, fantastic world for generations to come. You may be thinking, okay, Sam, it all sounds very gloomy, but I see that it could be good. But isn't it someone else's job to do? I've got too much going on right now. I'm too busy. What would I do anyway? What stops you being part of this? What stops you? Is it that you don't know where to start? Is it that someone else should be dealing with this? Our governments, for example? Is it that you just don't have the time and you've got other priorities and you've got so many other stresses going on? Or is it? Or is it that you think that you're not good enough, that you wouldn't really have anything to offer? What is it for you? Maybe it's a combination of those things. I'm here to say that we all have something to offer here. We all have unique skills and strengths and qualities that can ultimately make a difference. The, the trick, if you like, is to start to figure out what it is that you wanna do and how you wanna do it. If you wanna dip your toe in the water or if you wanna dive right in 
or if you want to hold hands with several people <laughs> and all jump in together. I think my preference would probably be the latter if you would like to join me. You might also be thinking that this isn't really an issue for you. This isn't really an issue in your family or in your country these days. And if you believe that, I also want to open you up to, if you do believe that, that we can also be impacting other countries, other communities, and to see yourself as a global citizen, to see yourself as someone who can impact other places. Look at this event today. You've signed up for this event today. You're listening in. You've paid your donation and that money will go to women in Afghanistan already by being part of this, which is not too onerous on you, I hope. You are contributing to making a difference in somewhere that needs some help right now. Sometimes as well, we all need a bit of outrage. A bit of outrage is that spurt that gets us going. Let me show you a picture that my daughter, my 12 year old daughter showed me, was on, um, came up for her on Amazon yesterday. Let me show you this. Okay. So this came up as a recommendation for her, for her to uh, look at these uh, different magazines and there were some posts on it. What can you see that is wrong, in my opinion, <laughs> with these images. On the left is a magazine for girls, and on the right is a magazine for boys. Now, even though this was a post that originally these magazines were from 2016, five years ago, she's still getting these recommendations now. Now, because we live in a household where we talk about these things all the time, and you know, she has to have me as a mother. She came in and she wanted me to see this and she screenshotted this and she wanted you to see this today. What do you see that's so wrong here? There's so many things that outrage me here. I can't even begin to start. But do you notice that on the boys' side, it's all about your future and what you can be and you can be an astronaut and you can be an artist. You know, you can run the world. On the girl's side, got to think about your dream hair. I mean, okay. Also, my daughter is a girl of color. So what is she seeing? She's seeing white blonde girl, pretty skinny, worrying about her hair. What messages is this sending to both all genders of our young people as she embarks on her teenage years? Now, this kind of thing it's overt sometimes like this, many times it's unconscious. It's, it's uh, they call it unconscious bias these days and it seeps, it seeps into our lives. It seeps into our media, it seeps into our, uh, our thinking, it seeps into our schools, it seeps into our organizations. And then we wonder, we wonder why aren't I getting that promotion? or what's happening here with regards to my career, or why is it that there are so few women who are running this organization? And you know what we do? What do you do? Most people think it's their fault. Well, there must be something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with me. So I need to make a change. I need to do something. I need to be fixed. And yes, there are many trainings and courses and stuff out there for women to be fixed. Women don't need to be fixed. We can always be developing ourselves, of course. We can always be growing our skills and becoming more confident, but it is systemic change that we need. Systemic. Systemic's a big word though. Systemic, we start thinking about organizational policies and being the head of HR and being the CEO and being the government leader. But what I would say to you is systemic starts with us. We're all part of the system, aren't we? We're all organized organisms going about our daily lives. And if we all on a collective basis can be taking courageous actions every day, then we contribute towards the positive change. 
we contribute towards making that difference. And once one person does it, it gives courage for others. Think about the Me Too movement. Think about the Women's March. Think about Black Lives Matter. And all of these different movements that start with a few people being outraged. And it grows and it grows and it becomes tangible. It becomes a thing. It becomes a vehicle for change. Now, whatever that looks like for you, whether you're one to march or you're not, whether you're one to campaign or you're not, or whoever you are, we all can have our own version of that, our own mini version, if you like. So I call upon you to think about what you can do. And I call up upon you because I want you to be focusing on yourself and the personal fulfillment and satisfaction you're going to get by being more courageous. Courageous is a wonderful fuel for the body. It makes us feel good when we do something that is courageous, especially when we do it for someone else. How is it that a woman can lift up an entire car when a child is underneath it? How does that happen? How is that possible? Does she suddenly become Superman and an S on the chest and is able to do it? How did she find that strength, that courage to lift up that car? She wasn't thinking, she was feeling it because courage comes from love. Courage comes from the French word, core, heart. And then if we add the piece at the end, rage, rage of the heart. Do you like that? So this outrage combined with the love, your love for people, for the planet, for yourself. When you put these two things together, Alone, they can't often really get to that action that you'd want here, this bold action, but you put these two things together and it becomes a recipe for your most delicious, delicious chocolate cake. Because courage then and, and walking through fear does not feel scary anymore. We are not scared to pick up that car. All we think about is, I've got to save this child. How is it that firefighters will run into a burning building? Because they are, their passion is for saving individuals, for making a difference. They've had the training, they know what they're doing, they're capable and they're going for it. And that's what I want for you, to think about where your bold steps will begin. You can think about this in three different ways. And then after we've done this, I wanna give you a chance to reflect a little bit. I'm gonna play some music and I'm gonna do visualization with you. So stay with that because I'm a really big believer in how these transrational techniques can also really help move you into courage. I want you to think about it in terms of your life, your work and your world. In terms of your life. Now, how about from today, you start taking actions, a little one baby step every day that is going to make a positive difference to your life. So for example, you speak up more in a meeting when you wouldn't do normally. You look after yourself more. You go for that swim that you've been avoiding and not doing because you've, everybody, everything else is so, is so hectic and busy. That you eat well that you sleep well, that you say no more, very powerful word, that you start and stop work at a decent time that will make you more effective and not less. And you are courageous in the, your fears about how you will be perceived or how career limiting that may or may not be because you are inspired by the vision of how your life could be if you put these things into practice. Now you may be asking, how is this a gender equality action? Well, think about it. If all of us collectively around the world started to pay more attention to our self-care and our work-life balance, 
which is one of the biggest issues for women, one of the hardest things right now with the increase in workload for women, with the childcare issues of, for women. But if we were start to start to slowly make these changes, then collectively, collectively things start to change. Now there's also your work, whether you run your own business, you work in government or school or a church or a store or in a large corporation. Do you have a gender equality group? If not, could you start one? Is there a corporate social responsibility initiative for you to be part of? Do you have your own business that could start having a social arm to it where you are giving back and contributing to social causes around the world? What could you do within your workplace to bring people together? Maybe you could start a collective courage group. Imagine that, that you're there to support each other, to be more courageous. I think that would be a very, very valuable use of your time and your energy. Now, from a bigger world perspective, never, ever think that you're too small to make a difference. And I know many of you don't think that and you're doing amazing things. But we can have this consciousness of focusing on ourselves and focusing on the bigger picture and the wider community. As women, particularly, we are able to handle and juggle and coordinate many things all at once. Your to-do list may look like something, buy, buy soup, start a women's equality group, finish work on time, end world peace. That can be your to-do list. I know many, many women who have got a to-do list just like that. So with where to start, there are some practical things you can do. Go into Google and Google Women's Equality Day. Google gender equality. Google the World Economic Forum Gender Gap Report and educate yourself. Educate yourself. Start to understand what's going on around the world. Where does your country rate in those World Economic Forum results? Where is it? Was it last year? Where was it the year before? Where is it now? Social media. Go on to Facebook, perhaps, or LinkedIn and find groups. Join a group. If you don't like it, you can leave the group. But join groups that are focused on equality and are posting articles and are sharing camaraderie and are doing events around the world for you to start getting involved. My main goal for you is that you get on the road. You get on the road, or if you're on the road already, you have a boost, a boost to kind of keep you going along the road.